Effective decision making requires purpose and a clear understanding of the environment that you're operating in. With complex, fast moving business requirements, it can be challenging to establish and articulate the forces at play. In this video, we will explore how Wardley mapping has helped shape the technical strategy for one particular organization who are trying to solve a very real and challenging problem indeed, how to combat illegal fishing. If you are not familiar with Wardley maps, fear not. A good map should be easy to follow. If this video series inspires you to try it for yourself, then we would strongly suggest that you check out Simon Wardley's excellent ebook on the subject. Overfishing is having a devastating environmental impact on the health of the world's oceans. The UN estimates that a third of all fish stocks are no longer biologically sustainable. This has significant consequences for the environment and for the estimated 3 billion people worldwide who rely on fish as their main dietary intake of protein. There are also wider associations with other criminal activities such as slavery and people trafficking. OceanMind are a not-for-profit organisation whose mission is to solve these issues by providing intelligence to agencies and government bodies responsible for enforcing compliance. They do this by analysing billions of data points taken from around the world in real time and running machine learning and AI models to detect suspicious or illegal activities. Their challenges are like many other organisations. Their business demands faster, more real-time insights. They are keen to expand their technology to solve problems beyond the legal fishing and they want to engage and collaborate with organisations outside their own through integrations and APIs. However, they are a small organisation with limited budget and resources. Their existing technology platform is ageing, which is restricting their ability to scale the solution. What's more, people are spending too much time firefighting and not enough time innovating. So how does a company like OceanMind, with these challenges and big ambitions, decide where to invest their time and energy? OceanMind understand the opportunities in migrating their solutions to the cloud, but this was a massive undertaking and there were so many different options open to them. What's more, cloud technology is constantly evolving. The task at hand looked daunting to say the least. At any given moment, you have decisions to make. There are many choices and paths you can take, but finding the best route to get to your intended destination can be challenging. Time spent veering off course or failing to recognize and adapt to the changing landscape can have a significant impact, not only through lost opportunity, but through the baggage you end up accumulating along the way. On the other hand, you can achieve far more than thought possible by having clear purpose and a map to help you navigate the right path. So let's go ahead and map OceanMind's landscape and see how it can help them guide their migration to the cloud. A good map is visual and context specific. It defines purpose, position and movement. Let's start to build up the map and I'll explain how this is achieved as we go along. First, we define a user need. In this case, illegal phishing intelligence. This becomes our anchor. It is the purpose behind the map. In order to satisfy the user need, we need several things. We need phishing alerts generated by the system, which indicates potentially suspicious behavior. We need project data, which describes the scope of the investigation, along with other parameters. We also need data in the form of vessel tracks and satellite imagery to help validate published alerts. Notice that each component we add to the map is placed according to its position in the value chain, which is represented by the y-axis. The x-axis represents the evolution of the component. This ranges from genesis to commodity. Components that are truly unique, rare or uncertain are placed to the left. Components that are utility, standard or well understood to the right. Fishing alerts are ocean wine's secret source. They are competitive advantage, so are placed to the left of the map. Vessel tracks and satellite imagery are representations of data that are readily available to purchase from third parties, but are presented in a way that allows analysts to do their job. In this case, they're placed under product. Fishing alerts need machine learning. This is not only a technical requirement, but is the capability that OceanMind is best known for. Machine learning requires data in the form of features, an example of which being a proximity alert. A proximity alert is generated when two or more vessels are close to one another for a period of time. This forms one of the many vessel behaviours that are constantly being monitored and analysed by OceanMind. Detecting proximity requires geospatial processing. Geospatial processing requires data in the form of AIS data. AIS data includes information about a vessel's last known position, along with other identifying information. 
it also needs compute and storage. The geospatial processing runs on an on-premise server cluster, which is custom built. On the other hand, AOS and satellite data are available from a number of data providers, and so its position is reflected accordingly on the map. To ensure the server cluster is patched and runs smoothly requires specialist operational support who understands the unique hardware and software configuration. Earlier in this video, I described movement as being an important attribute of a map. So far, we've captured our purpose and landscape. Now we can add movement to describe how the solution could evolve. Serverless compute and cloud storage is transforming modern application development. It is the latest evolution of cloud technology, removing the need to manage servers and offering a consumption-based model. Serverless products are becoming ubiquitous in the market and over the last couple of years have been proven and are well understood. It therefore makes sense to target serverless as the default compute fabric for the solution going forward. Unfortunately, OceanMind's current geospatial service is not available as a service offering. It runs on servers and requires expertise to configure and operate. To solve this, a different approach is needed. In order to benefit from serverless compute, OceanMind's specific geospatial workloads would need to be identified, extracted and optimized so that they can run in a serverless hosting environment. By moving this processing into .NET Core, it was possible to take advantage of the rich open source ecosystem, which includes standardized geospatial libraries. In effect, the solution could evolve from needing a complex geospatial database platform into a set of small, well-defined, purpose-built components optimized for OceanMind specific needs. The subsequent move to service would dramatically reduce the overall compute cost for the solution, which would in turn enable investment elsewhere. It would also allow the solution to scale seamlessly to meet growing demand without the need to over-provision resources. The relationship between strategical movements is important to understand. A movement may require other pieces on the board to change in step. We can use the map to show this relationship and justify actions that may not be obvious at first. At the bottom of the map, you can see how the development team could now become a modern DevOps team working with commodity tooling and processes. The move to serverless comes with additional benefits as well. The new team would no longer need to look after servers. This instead would be handled by the thousands of Microsoft engineers who operate the Azure platform. What's more, the solution would inherit the strict SLAs provided by Azure. A dedicated Microsoft support option was also available, allowing the DevOps team to focus on developing new features. The process of team evolution should not be overlooked. New skills and mindsets are required, which can take time and will need to be carefully managed beyond the initial migration. Using the map, it is now possible to see how the platform may be extended. For example, new capabilities, such as identifying people trafficking or identifying illegal salvage can be built using the patterns and components put in place during the migration. In effect, the platform has evolved from one that can only detect illegal phishing activity to one that can provide actionable insights across a range of marine applications. One area that we have not yet explored in detail are their existing machine learning capabilities. Maps can be used to help define the strategy around these two. Machine learning is the responsibility of highly skilled AI researchers who have built what is arguably OceanMind's most differentiating service. This is indicated by its position on the map. For this reason, it is also one of the riskiest areas and therefore needs careful consideration. Decomposing the value chain, we can see the need for experimentation, feature engineering, model training, and ML frameworks. Trained models need runtimes that in turn require hosting and storage. Using maps, we can start to explore the potential evolution of these components. The move to Azure has opened up opportunities to use cloud native machine learning and model management services. OceanMind can also start to take advantage of advancements such as Onyx runtimes that can be used to host complex machine learning models in serverless environments, making it trivial and cost-effective to incorporate new ML models. To realize OceanMind's ambitions, the development of new machine learning models is key. This requires the adoption of commodity services and skills. The current black box nature of their existing machine learning services risks it becoming a barrier for change, which in turn could undermine longer-term goals. Mapping the components that make up the machine learning service and identifying what is truly novel and what is commodity helps to establish an actionable plan to address this risk. Solving the problem of illegal phishing requires collaboration with customers and other third parties. Let's explore how this can be achieved. 
This map shows a new public API capability that OceanMind introduced as part of Microsoft's AI for Earth program. Providing APIs to third parties requires billing, throttling, monitoring, and API documentation capabilities. These are provided through Azure's API management service. APIs use OceanMind's existing machine learning models hosted in containers and executed as self-containing jobs. As we have seen, the new machine learning evolution may involve cloud-native machine services and serverless compute. This has the advantage of providing a low-cost runtime allowing ML capabilities to scale beyond internal use. As new models become available, these can be exposed as APIs with minimal effort. The cost advantages maximizes the benefit of commercial opportunities, allowing reinvestment into the platform. In a short space of time, OceanMind has achieved recognition as experts in their field. The good news is that they are on course to accelerate the development of new services, providing better outcomes for the environment and people around the world. In summary, we believe that Wardley maps help to visually explain tactical investment decisions. If you strive for commodity to drive out cost and complexity, what's left is the value that makes you truly unique. Of course, the world and technology is constantly changing, so adjust your maps as the landscape evolves.